Even if Bubbles editor is quite powerful, you sometimes need that extra bit of customization to really make your design stand out. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add custom CSS to your Bubble application. So stick around and I'm going to show you everything step by step. Even though Bubble editor is quite powerful on its own, there are sometimes a few limitations when it comes to advanced styling. That's where custom CSS can really help you make your design stand out. It allows you to go even further than bubble own limitation and create really advanced styling such as this component with this type of animations. Okay, so let's dive in. To enable ourselves to add custom CSS into our bubble application, we are going to install a free plugin that is called Classify and that is very handy. So to install it, go into plugins in your app, add plugins and search for Classify. As you can see, it is totally free. Uh, it's well maintained and have a good documentation so you can go ahead and install it. In short, this plugin is going to enable us to give custom CSS classes to any element in our Bubble application. So it's really useful and we're going to learn how to use it properly. The second thing we are going to need to do is to enable HTML ID attributes in our Bubble application. So to do this, go into your app setting, into general, and go to the very bottom of the page and check the box that says expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML element. When this icon is checked, you are going to see that on any element that you can add on the page, on any bubble element, you'll see a new input called ID attribute, and this is where we are going to work. In traditional web development, a CSS class is a way to apply styling to multiple elements at once. You can think of it like a tag or label that you are going to attach to elements and that will tell them how to look and how to behave. You define these styles in your CSS file and then you can assign classes to any element to make sure that the properties apply to this element. For example, if you wanted all buttons on your page to have the same styling with the padding, the margin, the background and so on, you will create a button CSS classes and then on each button on your page, you will assign to them the CSS class buttons and therefore they will all be styled in the same way. Well, that's basically what we're going to do with Classify. So before going any further, we need to create our CSS style and add them to our bubble application. There are several ways to do this. Basically, we are going to modify the style sheet of the application to add more CSS classes. So one of the ways to do this is to go into your page setting and you, we will always do something like this. So we will open the style tags and we will close them with this typography. Basically, it will say that anything between the two tags will be added to the style sheet. Now that we have our style tags open, we can go ahead and put our classes into them. So now it's basic CSS. If you don't know it, you can ask ChatGPT to write some CSS for you. But basically, here's how it goes. We're going to put our class name reduced by a point, uh, your class name one. We are going to open brackets, and then you can put the attributes, the value, etc etc and then don't forget to close your brackets and then you can put any number of classes you like for example your class name two and you can go ahead and add three four five six seven in this particular case we added the code snippet to our page so it's a good way to do this if you only use this code snippet on a particular page but it will not be added on the rest of your app if you want to reuse this code snippet across your whole app across several pages what you can do is Take this snippet, go into settings, into SEO meta tags, and into script meta tags in header, you can paste this code and it will be applied on every pages of your app. So if you use it across your whole app, across several pages, it's a good way, it's a good idea to paste it here. One more thing to keep in mind is that if you are on a free plan on your bubble app, you won't be able to put some CSS code into your page header or in your app header. What you're going to have to do instead is to take an HTML element, slide it on your page, and enter your CSS code here instead, this way. So the same way uh, than what we did in our page header, but you'll have to do it with an HTML element. All right, now that we know how to add and customize CSS classes within our app, we can go ahead and learn how to apply it to some elements. To take an example to illustrate this, we are going to use what is called CSS background patterns. So basically, we are going to add a group to our page and add this type of background patterns that are made with CSS. It's a more lightweight solution to put background patterns on a group in your bubble app. So let's go ahead and do this. So the first step will be to add this styling, this CSS class to our app. So we are going to grab the CSS code of this background pattern 
and I'm going to add it to an HTML element in my case because I'm on a test app, so it's on a free plan. But if you are on a paid plan, you can add it to the page header or to the app header. So style, style, and I close my break, my, uh, my tags. Uh, I'm going to create a new class. So dot, uh, let's say background pattern one. I open my bracket and now I can paste all my CSS properties. So this is what I copied from the site. Uh, and now don't forget to close my bracket. All right, so I've created my CSS class and I've added it effectively to, uh, my, uh, to my app style sheet. So now I can hide it, hide this. So I'm going to 10 pixels by 10 pixels so that I can easily select it. And now I'm going to grab a group, put it on my page. I'm going to make it wider, take the whole width of the page. I'm going to add some mean height. And now I can add a CSS class to this element. This way, when it is added, this element will take these properties. So it will have this background image with this CSS gradient. Uh, this background position, etc., etc. Any attribute you will add to this CSS class. So how do I do this? I'm going to use a classify command. Basically, the classify plugin that we installed earlier has three commands that you can use. So the add class that will add a CSS class to an element, the remove class that will remove a CSS class from an element, and the temporary class that will set a temporary CSS class. So it's a class that will disappear when the ID attribute do not mention this class. We'll come back to this later. In this case, we are going to use the add class to add the CSS class. So all I need to do is to use this command. So I'm going to open the bracket, add class in our case, uh, and with a capital letter on the C, two points, and then I can write the name of my class, which was background pattern one. Then I can close my quotes and close my brackets. So here's how it looks. Now, if I hit preview on my page, we can see that the background pattern has been applied thanks to the CSS we added. Now, in some cases, you might need to remove this CSS class based on a specific event or condition. For example, uh, in some cases, you might need to remove this CSS class if the screen gets too narrow, too small. Basically, we are going to do this with a conditional and with the second commands that classify allows us to use, which is the remove class. It's similar to the add class, but instead of adding a CSS class, it will remove it. So how do we do that? You can select your element. So this is the element on which we've added our CSS class. And we are going to add the simple conditional. In this case, I'm going to use the, to use the current page width. But you can use anything, for example, the status of a user, uh, the number of orders, something like that. And then we are going to select inferior to 992 pixels. And then I'm going to modify the ID attribute. If you remember, the ID attribute is where uh, we added previously the add class command. I'm going to copy the add class command. And instead of using the add class command, I'm going to change it to remove. Basically, it will remove the class background pattern one. So if I reload my page, you can see that I opened the debugger uh, and I set it to responsive. You can see that here we have the screen width. If I make it smaller at 992, it becomes transparent because the class we've added previously has been removed. Also, depending on your case, you might need to add several classes on an element. To do this, all you need to do is add uh, other classes to your element. For example, your class name 2, your class name 2, and you can add as many as you want, your class name 3. Make sure to stay in the same quotes. So as you can see, it looks like this, add class background pattern. So I open my quotes, I type uh, separated by a space all my classes, and then you can add as many classes as you want. And there you go. Now you know how to add custom CSS on any Bubble application. And it's basically the way to break any limitations from Bubble and really make a good design that will stand out. Because with this, you can make animation, tweak layouts, or break any limitations from Bubble. I hope you liked it. See you.